Welcome to the world-famous Santa Monica Pier in Southern California and the virtual tour of Smurf, the Santa Monica Urban Runoff Recycling Facility. Hello, my name is Neil Shapiro and I am the Watershed Management Program Coordinator for the City of Santa Monica. Since most of you cannot get to Santa Monica to see the Smurf with your own eyes, it is my distinct pleasure to guide you on a virtual tour of this unique and revolutionary facility. The Smurf is designed to treat the water that flows off our streets rain or shine. Because you see, water flows year-round in both dry and wet weather. And treating this water originating from our streets is highly unusual and makes this facility unique in the world. We protect the Santa Monica Bay, a vital economic and recreational resource, and generate an important new source of non-drinking water for other uses, almost half a million gallons per day. Urban runoff is generally known as the dirty water that flows along our gutters, alleys, and streets when it rains and even when it is not raining. In much of Southern California, our dry weather runoff flows are very high due to improper washing activities, hosing down sidewalks, driveways, parking lots, and streets, draining pools, overwatering, and leaks and overspray from irrigation systems. All these wasteful activities discharge polluted water into the storm drain system, which in Southern California and other parts of the country flow directly to the ocean without treatment. Urban runoff is now the single largest source of water pollution in our local waters. The objective of the Smurf is to eliminate about 95% of the city's dry weather runoff, the cause of heightened bacterial levels polluting our ocean waters. These higher levels violate state water quality standards and cause the posting of beach signs to warn people to stay out of the ocean. The diverted runoff goes through five treatment processes. The highly treated recycled water is then delivered to a number of city and private customers where the new local water supply is used for landscape irrigation and indoor flushing. Generally, about one acre foot, or about 300 to 400,000 gallons of runoff, is processed daily year-round. One acre foot covers a football field with one foot of water. Again, that's dry weather flow, that is, waste and wasted water. By collecting this wastewater, Smurf provides the city with 2 to 4 percent of its daily water needs. Finished Smurf water, which is non-drinkable or non-potable, avoids the need to use an equal amount of drinking water and helps the city become a little more self-sufficient in water use. Another unique aspect of the Smurf is how it was designed. The treatment process is presented with public viewing in mind. We can see much of what happens as the water and we move through the five treatment steps. Step one of the treatment process is sending the incoming water through the rotating drum screen, which removes trash and debris. Inside this device is a five millimeter screen. The solids are trapped inside the screen drum while the filtered water passes through and out of this device. The solids are moved to one end of the drum and delivered to the sanitary sewer. For each of the first four treatment steps, there is an effluent that goes to the sanitary sewer. Water leaving the screening treatment stage exits through the first of three waterfalls. Step two of the treatment process is grit removal. As the water leaves the rotating drum screen, it is channeled into the grit chamber. The purpose of this treatment system is to remove grit or small particles of rock, sediment, and sand. The spinning action in the chamber forces the heavier particles against the chamber's inner wall where they slow down and sink to the chamber's bottom and are pumped out to the sanitary sewer. After passing down the second waterfall, the water enters a sublevel 250,000 gallon storage compartment where the water rests for a short period of time before continuing on its cleansing journey. Step three in the treatment process is oil and grease removal. These pollutants are effectively removed with a treatment system called a dissolved air flotation device or DAF unit. Let's go to the top where we can get a better look. The water leaving the sublevel storage compartment after the grit removal process is pumped under pressure to the DAF unit. 
dissolved air and a coagulant are injected into the pressurized water. As the water exits the pipe and empties into the open basin of the DAF unit, air forms bubbles and the coagulant attaches to and brings along unattached and free oil and grease with it to the surface. A rotating arm with a skimmer removes the top layer of water that contains the oil and grease coated bubbles. The treated water then heads out to treatment system four, microfiltration. Step four in the treatment process is called microfiltration, a process where water is forced through perforated plastic tubes that act as a microscopic membrane blocking out all remaining sediment impurities. Hundreds of tubes hang from five tube assemblies, all submerged in the pretreated water. As water is forced from the container, water molecules can only pass through very small perforations or holes. Particles that make the water cloudy do not pass through but cling to the outer wall of the tubes. Every 10 to 15 minutes, the system back flushes, forcing finished water from the facility back through the tubes and perforations, knocking off the particles. This waste mixture is pumped out. Treated, clear water heads to the final treatment, disinfection. Step five or disinfection is the final treatment process. Disinfection is performed by exposing the water leaving microfiltration to ultraviolet radiation. This process was chosen over other disinfection methods due to its environmental benefits. Treated water from microfiltration bubbles up at the beginning of the channel. The water flows through the U-shaped channel where four sets of UV light fixtures await to radiate the flowing water and neutralize microorganisms. At the other end of the channel is our third waterfall, where the completed recycled water cascades into the 250,000 gallon clean water sublevel storage compartment. This open pool, used frequently as a wishing well, shows how clean and inviting the finished product is. A special feature of Smurf is its modular design. Should water quality standards become more restrictive in the future, the city can install a reverse osmosis system in this existing space, designed specifically for taking the water to a final and sixth treatment system, reverse osmosis. Smurf would be capable of producing potable or drinking water. Recycled water is stored below the Smurf deck until it is pumped to customers for indoor flushing during the day and irrigation during the night. Three pumps serve as the engine for the distribution system to many parts of the city. Customers include parks, road and highway medians, a cemetery, the city's public safety facility, and private businesses. The recycled water is regularly tested to ensure that water quality standards are met. A potable water backup port is available to maintain deliveries to customers during times Smurf is shut down for regular maintenance rainy periods, or unexpected situations. A city facility would not be complete without artistic and educational components. Three ceramic tile artworks on the north wall show what this site looked like before the arrival of Smurf, a tree-covered hillside. The trees were transplanted in other city sites. Here on the wall at street level are three circular tile mosaics that impart an important message. See if you can guess the message as it relates to the objective of Smurf. Did you get it? Notice the largest circle to the right, smaller middle one, and the smallest one to the left. And look for the difference in colored tile pieces. You probably got it. As you move right to left, there are more white tiles indicating clean water molecules than colored tiles indicating different pollutants. At the two observation platforms are educational pedestals with explanations and photos of the runoff problem, treatment systems of Smurf, how the water is used, and steps we can all take to reduce runoff pollution. Along the walkway between the upper platform and lower one are three sets of artwork that address urban runoff problems, solutions, and how life thrives when we keep our ocean waters healthy. And finally, as our virtual tour concludes, we have an accessibility feature. For example, this ramp. The city wants to ensure that all people who visit our community 
no matter the physical challenge, can enjoy our facility. For those with mobility challenges, we have our access ramp that allows accessibility to our world-famous Smurf, the pier, beaches, and outdoor shopping mall for anyone, anytime. And if you look closely at the fencing materials of the ramps, you'll notice another hidden message similar to the one I showed you a few moments ago. Look at the openings in the fencing as one goes from top to bottom. Notice anything unusual? Yes, the opening sizes are all different. Did the construction company make a mistake? I thought so at first, but no. Actually, you'll notice at the top, the openings are largest and at the bottom, smallest. This demonstrates that as the openings get smaller, more pollutants are removed. The smaller the openings get, the smaller the pollutants can be removed. Is that cool or what? The city is excited that it can be on the cutting edge of watershed protection and sustainable water management. And while Smurf has been operating since 2001, the city is always seeking out innovations in watershed management. As a sustainable and coastal city, one dependent upon a healthy marine coastal zone, the city is constantly fine-tuning its facilities and policies to better protect its urban and aquatic environments to ensure that its residents, businesses, visitors, wildlife, and ecosystems are protected and safeguarded today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. On behalf of the City of Santa Monica, I hope you enjoyed this virtual tour. More information is available at our website. If you have questions, you can contact me directly via phone or email. Have a wonderful day.